Everyone, in this video, I'm going to go through your first specialized skills task, which is about controlling movement. So we're looking at freezing and blurring movement and capturing that in our photos. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through the assignment. I'm going to go through the assessment criteria. I'm going to show you some examples. And hopefully this will be a really good point um, to check back on this video to help you um, in the assignment as you go through. All right. So this assignment, you are required to present two uh, photos. It's a minimum, you can do more if you wish, but it's to demonstrate your practical skill in controlling um, movement. Now you can either use TV mode or you can use manual mode. Um, most of you are using manual mode, so I would just stick with that. Um, so you're gonna need to present a fast shutter speed and a slow shutter speed, and they need to be as JPEGs. Now the evidence of producing this um, needs to be uh, presented as a multimodal presentation. Now this is a three minute presentation um, that is done usually by creating a PowerPoint and screen recording over the top, kind of like what I'm doing now. Um, you need to provide evidence. The reason we're doing this multimodal is because you need to provide evidence of your producing assessment criteria, problem solving and evaluation and you know, evidence that you have the skills in your photo photographs. So I'm going to show you what that actually looks like because that's a little bit new. This is the first time you've done it. Um, and so it's a little bit different, but I will hopefully be able to help you through it. Okay, so uh, the task breakdown now, just move me down here. Uh, this is where this video will go in this PowerPoint for you. Um, but as you can see the assessment criteria, just so we can break it down a little bit more. Um, application of skill, uh, procedures, processes, and techniques to create a solution. The solution is the final photos. Now, this is not only the photo themselves, it's also your ability to Photoshop or Lightroom to post-process your photos. That gets marked in here as well in P1. P2 is very much about the ability to develop technical, um, sorry, solutions to technical problems during your process. So that will be assessed through a documenting problem solving like on location uh, problem solving, like during the shoot, and also problem solving of your final photos before you edit them. That's also a, a form of problem solving. You're going to hit that there too. Then your evaluation, you're going to be evaluating the final um, uh, photos themselves and the process that you went through. Now, how to actually do a multimodal presentation. What we've, we've had a few different ones in the past and to be honest, the most successful ones are the ones that are a bit like this video here, where you create a PowerPoint and then you actually screen record your voice or like voice record over the top of it um, and make sure it's in that three minute time frame. So it's a three minutes. It's really, really fast to provide all of that evidence. But hopefully with some of the tips I'm going to give you and show you some examples, you'll be able to do it. It is possible. We've had it happen last semester. <laughs> all right. So the first thing I would do is I create a PowerPoint with visual evidence. The cool thing about a multimodal presentation is that you have visual evidence and you have verbal evidence and combine mind, you can tell a lot in three minutes. Um, and that's what I really want everybody to try to do. So create a PowerPoint with visual evidence. So you use lots of photos. Um, you can do videos in there. You can provide key information. I would write some dot points. Oh, you need to make sure you have settings as well. I would write some key dot points, things that you really don't want people to not know. Um, and that's the only amount of dot points. I wouldn't put every single dot point and read it. That's not a good multimodal presentation. Then what I would do is I would write a script, making sure you address the assessment criteria. So um, then it kind of keeps you on track. Obviously, I don't want you to be sitting there reading a script like this. Um, however, if your face isn't in it, that does make it a little bit easier when you have a script so you don't forget key essential um, assessment criteria, which can happen. Then what you've got to do is record your voice or your face and voice um, over the PowerPoint and make sure it's under three minutes. Um, some programs that we use uh, or we've used in the past, um, QuickTime on your Mac is a really easy thing to screen record with um, and you can have a face in it, I'm pretty sure, or you can just record the screen. Um, Screencast-O-Matic is what we use and you can go to screencast-o-matic.com and just have a free trial. The only thing with that is that you can't edit it in in your actual program um, and you'll usually have a watermark, but that doesn't really matter. Um, they are the two programs I would use. I'm sure there is plenty of other uh, screen recording type of um, uh, software out there that you can use. Now, people in the past have done a PowerPoint and added in audio clips. However, it is really challenging to make sure you're under that three minute like 
kind of rule. And um, yeah, it doesn't flow as easily as just pressing play on a movie. Um, but we can talk more about that in person. All right. So some examples, let's go through that. So for examples of um, this task, uh, I've just put together a little bit of a show of things people have done um, in past years. So for fast shutter speed, we're really looking at freezing motion. So as you can see, high technical quality, um, a great point of interest, really strong composition to really showcase that point of interest. Um, even exposure or correct exposure, sharp, sharp focus. When you're capturing fast shutter speed, you wanna make sure that the movement um, the frozen parts are really sharp. You can see that in pretty much all of these. If those water droplets were blurred, they would not be a fast shutter speed. Okay, that's what we're really looking for. Frozen, sharp movement. All right, the next one, slow shutter speed. Slow shutter speed um, is about capturing the blur of movement in contrast to really still things that makes sense. You can see, for example, there are things that are staying still that are really sharp. That means that when there's something that moves, that blur is becomes that focal point and it's not just like an out of focus photo, obviously. So these are just some examples of different techniques that you um, could try yourself. Okay, so now you've seen the different techniques that you can do. What we need to then work out is, well, what kind of evidence are we going to need to collect and present to um, really address the assessment criteria? Okay, so what we are then gonna do is we're gonna jump across to the assessment breakdown sheet. And this breakdown sheet shows us everything that we're going to need um, to put into our multimodal presentation, because that is the next step. It's producing that multimodal presentation to really showcase um, all those assessment criteria. So please make sure you pop your, um, your subject information, uh, what technique we're working on, and then going into um, the first step, which is your production, which is about problem solving. So it's really important that your problem solving is uh, talking about when you're out on location, when you're doing your photo shoot. Now there's a few ways that you can collect this evidence. Either you can set up a camera and sort of record a time lapse of you actually taking these photos. But what actually works really well is where you have a photograph um, and you can recognize, we have a series of photographs that didn't work and you can recognize what you were trying to do. Because realistically, when you're out on location, Say, for example, composition. You set up your composition, you take the photo, and it doesn't work. So then you change it, okay? Then you change the composition, and you take another photo, and that doesn't work. Then you change the composition to another photo. That is problem solving. So you have a problem, composition, and then you try to fix it. Now, I'll show you. So uh, an example of that from a past student, as you can see here, is about really taking a heading, problem solving, composition, putting some key dot points, and then showing that process in photographic form from start to finish. That only, that shows me that you have not only had a problem, but you've solved it. And that is really important in this assessment criteria. Um, you can do this with camera settings as well. So say for example, camera settings, you start off at 1 25th of a second and it's not fast enough. So then you increase your, um, you increase your shutter speed and then it's still not fast enough, then you increase it again, and then your exposure is wrong, so then you change this. All of that needs to be documented. Um, a couple of problems across the, across the technique really um, does hit that criteria and make it really um, substantial in evidence. Okay, um, obviously include camera settings, technical dot points, et cetera, et cetera. Then when it comes to the post-processing, um, what you wanna do is you wanna show your unedited image. So this unedited image is great um, because what it allows you to do is annotate what needs to be fixed. Um, and that's another part of problem solving. So, okay, we've problem solved our whole way to get our final photo, but now there are some problems in that photo that we want to fix during our post-processing. Now, the best way to do that is to actually screenshot it, pop it into the document, and then you can annotate it. So as you can see here in these examples down here. Now I'm gonna go through the multimodal process after I talk through it, um, and that way you can see some examples of what I'm talking about. Then what you need to do is do stages of production. So I wanna see detailed screenshots or screen recordings from Photoshop or Lightroom. I should change that. You can choose whichever program you want um, with dot points outlining your process. Because again, for PR2, that's what I'm looking, uh, PR1, sorry, I'm looking for your ability to use a post-processing pr uh, program to actually um, improve your photos. 
Then you put your final photos in. And then with your evaluation, what you want to do is you want to reflect on the final photograph. Is it successful and not and why? And you want to reflect on the process you follow to take your photograph. Now, the challenge in this section is I don't want to see one big slab of text and you just read off of it. I'd rather see the photos side by side and then you talk your evaluation. Now, this particular form of presentation, this multimodal, is challenging to keep concise, to not get carried away with a really kind of narrative style of narration, I guess. So I don't want you to be like, I think that my final image was brilliant because I did this and then I did this and then I did this. Like we need to be quite factual. The final photograph is successful because of the color. Um, it was a deliberate choice to create a contrasting color scheme, that sort of thing. You can see how instead of just talking it out, very, being very like blah, 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 I'm being quite factual and I'm being quite concise. And that is key to keeping this three minutes like as useful as possible. All right, so they are the things that you need to include in your multimodal presentation. So if we jump in and have a little look at what that looks like in more depth, um, I think hopefully that'll help. So by all means, pause this screen and have a read of it. But using visual and verbal evidence is so important. The first problem I solved was correcting the composition of my photo. It took many adjustments to get the final correct balance of a dynamic foreground and background. Rule of thirds was the focus for composition to add impact in this photograph. After the final composition was established, the exposure of the photograph had to be adjusted as the water in the foreground was underexposed. The ISO had to be changed from one. Okay, so as you can see, she's got problem solving and she's got the headings. She's got the photographic evidence with the settings. She's got the key dot points and she's discussing things that aren't written on the PowerPoint, which is really important. Also, she's talking about her camera settings. That adds a next level of sophistication, which I'm really hoping you guys will you know, do. Uh, so that's the problem solving. This is what I meant by post-processing and annotating, what's wrong with it. And then when it comes to actually documenting that uh, post-processing process, similar to your um, formative work in with post-processing with Lightroom and Photoshop, I want you to screenshot those key steps um, to show like your skill level, basically. All right, if we look at the next PowerPoint, um, Here's an example of a different part. So problem solving. What's a really good thing about this particular um, student's work is that she's actually used annotation a lot. Annotation is a great way to directly, deliberately point my eye at something without saying anything. It's really quite good. So I will automatically look here and then listen to what's been explained. Um, with the evaluation, with E1, having your two final photos, like I said, and just talking over it is so much more successful than a big slab of text. And this is a really cool way to show evidence of the producing skills for P1 by doing a time lapse of the editing and being able to speak over it. So if I play. 100. The editing process begins with layering the two images, which fills in certain areas in the image. Then crop to size, getting rid of the distracting and unnecessary empty spaces. You actually see what you're doing as you do it. Or adjust it really. to emphasize the light trail colors. The brightness is changed to negative 80 and contrast. So you can see that even though she did that time lapse, there's also those screenshots with those last really important things that weren't able to be seen in the time lapse. So that is really, really helpful as well. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. And this is a very new way um, for photography. It's only new in SACE as of last year. So uh, we're all still learning and trying different things. Um, but it's important to do it as you go. So write a script make your PowerPoint and keep adding your evidence in and give yourself time to uh, practice and record it to being the most concise and informative PowerPoint within that three minutes as you can. Uh, as always, questions, queries or concerns, please just ask. Um, and I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. Okay, thanks guys, bye.